How's it going everybody? It's your host Sam here. This is a very impromptu video being filmed the night before it goes live, but the circumstances of this video are such that I don't want to delay talking about it at all. This was really a special day for me. If you're the praying type, this might speak to you. If you're not the praying type, maybe this will convert you. <laughs> um, but uh, while I usually try and avoid any talk of religion or politics surrounding my online identity at all, the Lord spoke to me today. I had the luckiest find of probably my life thus far, and a really uh, incredible interaction as a result of this find. And uh, there's no other way to say it other than I could genuinely cry. It was earlier this past summer that my friend Ashton, who's doing music education here at GU, bought my Con Director 14H trombone, and in its place, I found a local offering for this King Tempo 606 for 150 bucks. So that day, pulled up, tried the horn out, and even if it wasn't love at first sight, it was love at the first note. I really enjoy this horn. I genuinely think the 606 is one of the very best, if not the best, student model trombone ever made. You can check out the review up in the card. Obviously, there are professional trombones that do the job better than any student model would. But nonetheless, as far as student horns go, unless you think of like technicalities, like how the Con 4H was later made into a student model after its original iteration, but if you play one of the professional ones, it's just incredible. If you set aside any technicalities like that and you talk about strictly student instruments, in my opinion, they don't get better than the 606. But with that said, although that Tempo 606 was $150 very well spent, in my opinion, at the very least at the time, I found myself this year kind of going, well, this is great, but given how short my arms are and how much dexterity they lack, I would really love to have a small bore F attachment trombone. Now I have a couple of F attachment trombones, one of which I'm selling because it's a medium bore that I don't play especially well on, and one of them is my Con 88H, which is a mainstay in my collection, and I plan on driving that thing to its death the way I do my Toyota. But the thing with the small bore F attachment, such as the Selmer Bolero that I played on for a few months, that's another one I reviewed, and you can find that up in the card, there is really something incredible about the small bore F attachment, where it has that jazz sound, but still has the full facility of the F attachment register, and it's just helpful, like I said, for people like me who have very short arms and can barely get to the end of the slide. And I found myself wanting one of these, uh, be it another Bolero, be it a King 3BF, be it a King 605F, which is a really tiny bore F attachment student model. I guess it'd be an intermediate probably, because you don't typically see student horns with F attachments. Be all that as it may, I was pretty much priced out of the market except for one generous offer on a 605F that needed a little bit of work done to it. And I, I, like I said, I got a pretty good price for that and I was just about ready to pull the trigger on it. I was waiting until I sold my medium bore. And then today on my Facebook Marketplace feed, I saw a listing that basically just described something like very nice trombone and music books. And uh, the price on it was 150. And I looked at it, I see a rotor, I see a silver plated bell, and I see a king hard case. King 3BF, silver sonic, gold wash bell. In case you're not terribly familiar with jazz trombones, it does not get better than this, uh, to put it simply. The King 3B is in my fairly arrogant opinion on this subject, the best jazz trombone ever to exist. And it is inimitable by basically anything on the modern market. Granted, there are probably a few $7,000 Shires straight bore trombones that would do the same thing as well as a King 3B, but there's something about the vintage sound of the 3B that just makes it irreplicable on the modern market. And when you add a sterling silver bell to that, and when you add an F attachment to that, oh, it really doesn't get any better. Now, of course, I had my doubts considering that for the same price that I got my Tempo 606, a student model trombone, I was looking at a picture of what appeared to be a King 3BF Silver Sonic in its original case. But I sent a message in almost a, a panic, if you will, and I was stressed out for, you know, the next uh, hour while we were... Uh, figuring things out while I was waiting on a response, and then when I got a response, we talked things out. Um, moreover, the seller was local, and that's why it popped up so high on my feed. And within the hour of that, I was at her doorstep 
with $150 in my pocket. Um, I figured local pickup, not a lot to lose. I can at least go check it out. And if it turns out it's not a 3BF or if there's some crazy damage to it because the listing photos weren't excellent, then, you know, maybe we'll uh, say thanks, but no thanks. She brought me into her house and she had on the TV uh, Gonzaga's basketball game. Those of you who don't know, I attend Gonzaga University and even play in the basketball band. Uh, but I had to uh, miss that tonight for the sake of another rehearsal happening later that night, which I rushed off to after this transaction was completed. But yeah, she brought me into her kitchen where there sat this absolutely beautiful 3BF Silver Sonic. I knew what was coming because I saw the listing, but I still almost had to do a double take when I saw it. Just looked the whole thing over, looked at all the books. I asked, did someone in your family play? It was her late husband of 49 years, um, who passed away last year. And, um... Uh, you know, she's she's selling his old instruments and he played, you know, in, the, in a high school here in Spokane, Washington and, and made it to, you know, an all national jazz band type situation. And, you know, uh, she wasn't entirely positive that this was the horn that he grew up on. But considering the time frame of late 60s, it very well could have been. I mean, if he was in his teens at that time, you know, this could very well have been the horn that uh, he made all those memories on. I could tell it was uh, hurting her a little bit to give it up, but... Um, but, you know, she gave it to me. I, I thanked her profusely from the bottom of my heart, and I went off to my next engagement for the night. I texted her another really profuse thank you later because I still just didn't feel right. It felt it felt too good to be true. And, you know, from one God-fearing man to another God-fearing woman, I, you know, I, I wished her all the best and, you know, gave my condolences for her late husband. You know, getting, as she said, the whole interaction, getting to meet her and uh, and my message were that they made her day, um, and that she's sure that that um, her husband is smiling down as I as I play his horn. Um, it's a, it's a powerful it's a powerful sort of thing, that's for sure. I guess I'll give you a few notes on the three BF since that's probably what you're all here for. I'm gonna eschew the eleven M mouthpiece. I'm just gonna get out my Box Seven C like I have been using on the tempo, and uh, bearing in mind that the slide needs a little bit of work still, I'll let you guys listen to some. say a couple things. First of all, my playing is not great at the moment. I totally blew my chops in jazz band today as we ran a rather large solo of mine three and a half times over. Um, and then I, I, like I said, I just got back from another rehearsal where I was playing the trumpet and trying to get my chops to dial back in. But this thing, oh, like I said, love straight from the first note. Surveying this thing at a glance, the slide has been sitting around for a bit and needs a little bit of work. Definitely in playing position, in context, it feels a little bit slow. The rotor is, I would say, 85% of the way there, and it's missing a screw. Uh, it's got this really nice plastic linkage that I saw on the Selmer Bolero, and I really like. And it's got a trigger that hinges this way rather than around the brace, another feature that I like, and once again, a feature of the Selmer Bolero, which is, to all intents and purposes, the French King 3B, and probably 95 to 97% is good. Um, if not more, it's really up there. Also a definite plus is the fact that the original King case was included in great condition, as was the original King 11M mouthpiece. Now, I'm not stellar about this mouthpiece, but this and a couple other historical kings will make a nice mouthpiece spotlight video. And worst to worst, it'll sit on my shelf of mouthpieces, or in this case, and just be part of the overall collection. I also looked up the serial number just before filming. Uh, it's in the earlier half of the 400,000s, placing it into the late 60s. And this is by no means a replacement for a review of the King 3B. I've been wanting to review a standard King 3B that belongs to Clearwater, and something like this, 
preferably side by side. I know a guy in town who plays basically this exact horn. Um, but I, I never expected that I would own one during my college days. So expect that review at some point uh, within the next couple eons, as things on this channel generally tend to go. You know, footage sits around unused for a year or more. But nonetheless, that'll be coming someday in a galaxy far, far away. Um, but, you know, to spoil the review a little bit, like I've been saying, there is nothing better. This is as good as it gets. This is the end-all be-all for basically vintage jazz trombones in general. The King 3B is the standard. You add a sterling silver bell to that, you get the same lovely whispery softs, but just more nails at the louder dynamics. You put an F attachment on it, yeah, it tames the horn a little bit because of the added mass, but you add all sorts of solo capabilities. And what you end up with is, like I said, basically the quintessential jazz trombone for lead and solo work. I hope I never part ways with this thing. Let's put it that way. Thank you so much, everybody, for watching. I am rather exhausted, so I'm gonna go put this footage on my computer, splice it together, and then go hit the hay. Um, it's been a very, very busy week, but today, again, has just been an amazing blessing, and I wanted to share the story with all of you because of just how deeply it touched me. Um, until next time, appreciate you tuning in, stay tuned for more, and I'll see you on the flip side. Thank you.